The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink is a podcast that combines amazing cocktails with the kind of infinite wisdom that can only come from a lifetime of poor decisions. So take a journey with everybody's favorite bartender. We can make some drinks, have some laughs, and who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. See you soon. Hey, everybody. It is old HRK here, everybody's favorite bartender, and it is time for another episode of The Perfect Drink. Um, so I don't know, you know, a uh, c- couple exciting things happened this week. Number one, uh, I was, let me, let me save that for number two. Number one is I got a show Wednesday that I just found out about 30 seconds ago at my buddy's at 9 p.m. I'm scheduled to work uh, Wednesday at 9 p.m., so I don't know how the fuck that's going to shake out. Might have to just step out from behind the bar, do a quick set, and go back. I don't know what to expect. I think that I was asked to do this like like six weeks ago, and was like, sure, and then forgot to like, and then forgot all about it. But I just got the message right now. So once I'm done with this podcast, I probably ought to, uh, you know, throw a set together and uh, you know <laughs> make a list of jokes. I don't fucking know. But uh, then the, the other exciting development is I was at a nearby watering hole just uh, running my mouth. And uh, the bartender says to me, hey, do you do a podcast? And I was like, yeah, you know, I thought maybe we were Facebook friends or something. And she was like, I recognized your voice. And I thought that was pretty goddamn flattering. So, um, you know, I don't know. That was, that, was, that was a big deal for me. So then I was like, oh yeah, blah, 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 the podcast. And then she proceeds to tell me that she's got like four dude friends who like trash my fucking podcast. Which is fine, except, you know, I was like, well, what, well, what don't they like about it? <laughs> you know, because I feel like, I mean, I know that like girls probably like to, uh, gr- I, here's what I want to say. I know that girls who listen to this show probably listen to it from like a, you know, he's a jerk, but he's honest and funny, LOL, whatever. But the, the show is certainly more relatable to men than women. Like I'm, I, you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of a, I, I, I give a man's perspective. If you're a guy and you listen to this and you like your takeaway is that I'm like a chauvinist jerk, you are the biggest pussy that's ever lived. What the fuck is wrong with you? So back to my point, I was like, so what, uh, so what don't they like about the show? And she said, he, they, they said that, that the guys said I was just like a chauvinist, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Well, of course I'm a fucking chauvinist because I'm a man and I'm honest. The only difference between me and you, you fucking dork, is that I'm honest. These, you know, (laughs) there's no worse dude in the world than the dude who, like, trashes the other dude for being, like, a bad guy. You know what I mean? Is there any worse quality in the world than, like, that virtue signal, like, white knighting dude who's like, oh, he's a total jerk. I, you know, women deserve to be respected and blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you know? These fucking guys. I swear to God, nobody gets less pussy than those guys. I don't care what anyone fucking says. I will fucking throw my I'm a jerk game against their I'm a good guy game at the same girl at the same time if they want. I don't give a fuck. And I will stand by the fact that I am a jerk and I'll still bang that girl more often than not before that fucking dude will. Uh, the, just the biggest. It's like it's like being a male feminist, which I, which I rag on all the time. Um, and I mean, look, like, I, I, here's the thing. Everybody's like, I'm a fem. Everybody's a feminist. Like the, the, being a feminist is not a brave move anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like all the hard work was done in like the, you know, generations ago. You know what I mean? Those women did all the hard work probably up until like the eighties, maybe the fucking nineties. I don't know. But like the hard work's all done. You're just standing on the shoulders of giants being like, I'm a feminist. You're a fucking, and this is for women too, you know, but women are women. So they're allowed to at least say they're feminists, even though it doesn't make, even though it's not a real thing. It's like, it's like taking a taxi to the finish line of a marathon and acting like you ran it, being a feminist in 2021. That's what it is. And a male feminist it's so clearly just a ploy to get pussy. And, and it's ironic because all you're saying is like, to the girl that you're trying to bang, I support the abortion if I accidentally knock you up. <laughs> That's who these dudes who don't like my podcast are. They're they're 
pro-abortion guys trying to blow it in girls on accident. <laughs> they're, they're just dudes with weak pullout game. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. No ultras this morning. I'm out of ultra, and I didn't want to run to the store. So I'm just making, sorry, I'm drinking the cocktail that I'm going to make. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll finish it by the time we start making it and make a new one so you can, so I can walk you through it with that. Let's, uh, let's get into ripping shots. Ripping shots. Ripping shots. All of my friends are ripping shots. All right, we're going to fade that out early because it's an easy shot. I just We're just shooting some tequila. I got some uh, Jose Cuervo Especial. It's just the fucking, the silver, you know, um, the old the old Blanco, I believe it's called on the streets. Um, so, yeah, today's Ripping Shots question was in regards to, like, is it bad for your relationship to share your relationship problems with friends? And people chimed in about family, too, so I guess we'll just make it friends slash family. So I just got, a, I got like, I, I took like three answers. So it'll be a quick one. Um, so Shelby from St. Joseph's, Missouri uh, says, OMFG, thank you. All caps, 32 exclamation points. Uh, you're welcome. I don't know what I did that was so great, but sure. She says, if your friends want details, they are either miserable or want, or want you to be. Keep that shit in house. Then after you both chill out together, you can laugh when you tell your friends the story of how you were so upset. Blah, blah, blah. You get it. Um, I suppose if your friends want details, it's kind of like, you know, you're just gossip seeking. You know what I mean? I get that. Like if you want, like if, like if you got a friend that's like, Ooh, tell me everything. They're probably a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> they probably enjoy the fact that, you know, you're not doing great with your significant other. Um, the part about just wait till you wait till you, um, wait till you both get over it because you always will, you know? And then, unless it's something major, but if it's a dumb fight, you know, and you're both seem like the other person's being unreasonable. Yeah. Just wait till you're both over it and then tell the story like as a joke, like I do on this podcast so often, <laughs> which, which, you know, always goes over well. Um, but yeah, that's good advice. I never thought about that. Like, like wait, you know, and then tell the story together. Like as a joke, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, uh, Michelle from Lamont says, especially family. I've learned that sometimes you can forgive certain things that your significant other has done, but it's hard for family and friends to forgive them. Family especially. That's a good point about the family because, you know, I, I feel like if your family, uh, I feel like your family has a different, mode. like if the point is your friends who want to hear that stuff are just wanting you to be, you know, miserable. I think with your family, if they like hold a grudge against your significant other for some old shit, it's probably because they really love you and care about you. Oh, I didn't rip my shot. Let me rip my shot. But um, I'll pour my next one here. But yeah, so telling family can be a little more dangerous, probably, um, depending on how bad it is. Um, and then the last one, Rhea from Mokina says, <coughs> excuse me, says, if they are in any way jealous of your relationship, they'll use it against you later and forever to judge you. The person that you are with or judge you and the person you are with to make them feel better about their own relationship. So that's the same kind of thing. Uh, so takeaway is like, yeah, it's probably not the best idea, but sometimes don't you want to just talk to somebody, you know, like sometimes you want to, you know, you, or, or maybe you just legit need advice. So my suggestion is, first of all, be careful about who you tell. Second of all, maybe just like have one person that you go to regularly. And then third of all, also tell that person the good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like to, so that they don't, if your friends are only getting the, the bad shit about your significant other, they're going to think that person is terrible. And if you've been with someone for a long time, you could probably bitch about them every day. You know what I mean? Like, I'll bet my mom could bitch about my dad every single day. And my dad's a pretty fucking awesome dude. And my mom will tell you that. But I'm just saying, like, you know, something. Some, everybody does shit that annoys you, especially if you spend that much time around them. So, yeah, I think the key is, because, you know, you probably want to vent. But the key is, you know, tell the good stuff, too, and, and, and keep it tight. So maybe just tell one person. Like, have one person you can fight in with that stuff and make sure that they won't tell anybody. Um, that's, that's how I, that's how old HR fucking K would do it. It's funny. One girl wrote it. I didn't read it. I don't know. I think I just kind of forgot about it, but I didn't forget about it now. And she said she tells her friend all the dirt, um, as a way to make sure that she doesn't go back to the guy. Um, but that's like an X. That's a different kind of thing. I'm talking about when you're still trying to make the relationship work. Um, 
you know, but I guess that's an interesting strategy. I'm, I'm just going to make sure my best friend will never, ever, ever let me get back into this toxic relationship. That's not, that's not a bad, uh, it's not a bad strategy. Uh, let me, let me take this second shot here for ripping shots. Man, we are coming out strong with the tequila. Holy cow. And I did one before the show, so I feel like three shots of tequila before noon is, uh, you know, it's going to be one of those days, I guess. Uh, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the cocktail. As I finish the first cocktail, um, today's cocktail is called a Paloma, and we will we will we will blend this in with pour decisions because this is how I came to this decision on what to pour. <coughs> The girl at the bar that told me that she recognized my voice, yada, yada, is, uh, her name is, I couldn't remember her name, but I kept thinking it was something like Paloma. It's Anolda, I think. She's a, you know, little Polish gal. Got one of those, got your, got your standard blonde hair, round face, you know. It's your standard Polish girl. Look, looks like she probably grew up in fucking Burbank or something. I don't know if that, I don't even know if that's a thing. I just made that up. But a Paloma is a delicious summertime cocktail. Very refreshing. There's several different ways to make it. Uh, tequila is the is the spirit, if you will. And then you can either use grapefruit, half grapefruit juice, half um, soda, um, and then you know you can squeeze in some lime juice, or you can just use squirt which not only is, is, I'm using diet squirt as to stay lean and mean, but here's the thing about squirt. Not only is it my one of my favorite sodas, it is also one of my favorite words. Squirt, 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 squirt. Just one of those words, you know, that makes you feel some kind of way. It's like uh, moist, if you will, for some people, but for me, it's opposite. I think it's great. Um, so I'm going to squeeze my lime in on top, and then I'll even garnish it here with a little lime wedge just to be extra. Um, and uh, hold on, I got my, my fucking screen froze up. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, we're back. I don't know. Hopefully that, hope, we'll check that out later. Hopefully it all went well. Um, Where was I? Oh, yeah, squirt. <laughs> you know, there's girls out there that will have you believe that squirt is pee. That, 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 I mean, like the other kind of squirt, the, uh, you know, the, the verb. <laughs> I guess it's a noun depending on how any fucking ways uh, that it's pee. And I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, if a girl tells you squirt is pee, it just means she can't squirt. That's all it means. Because uh, take it from a guy who, you know, I, I know pee when I see it and I know squirt when I see it. Oh, that's a delicious Paloma. Fun summertime drink. Okay. Like I said, this was, uh, we're going to segue into poor decisions here. And uh, talk about old HRK's poor decision of the week. And my poor decision this week, it might have been last week, I don't fucking know. But um, uh, Ashley and I got into a, another banger, as we will, from time to time. And uh, she sent me this text, <laughs> like mid-argument. And this was, it was a bad one. It was like, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a serious argument. I got to quit fucking, keep fucking this thing up. It was a bad argument. So, um. I'm trying to fucking fix this. God, this podcast is going to shit in a real hurry here. Just lost 22 listeners. Fucking not. So she sent me this text, and the text said, essentially, I'm just going to tell you how it was worded, and I could be wrong. Like, I delete this shit. She, she's she got fucking texts from 1996 still in her phone, just in case someone wants to say that they didn't say something they said. I When someone sends something to me that I don't want to fucking read or respond to, I just delete the whole thing. I just delete the thread. That's out of, out of sight, out of mind. But um, she sent me a text that essentially said, I want to make sure I don't fuck this up. It said, I will never, I said something like, I will never love you no matter what you do, or I will never love you like, yeah, like I will never love you no matter what you do or something like that. I don't know. I, I think that was it. I think that was it. But... <laughs> But the point is, uh, to me, there's only one way to interpret that fucking text message, and it is, this whole thing is done. You know what I mean? Like, I've lost that love and feeling, if you will. Which, you know, at the time between, you know, the feelings that I was feeling, which were sad, and the alcohol that I was drinking, which was plentiful, I was pretty bummed out. So what I did was, I copied the text and posted it like, 
ladies, how would you interpret this? And then I posted the fucking text. <laughs> I didn't post the text. I posted uh, the, the I, I copied and pasted. I didn't screenshot the text. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I fucking did. It was up for less than 30 minutes for sure. Probably like eight minutes total. And then I just thought to myself like, ah, that's not going to be worth whatever I get out of it. It's just going to make life worse. So I took it down. But I didn't take it down before uh, Ashley saw it. That's for fucking sure. And man, oh man, did I fucking hear about it. Now, in my defense, at this moment, even when I'm hearing about it, I'm like, who gives a fuck? You just told me you're never going to fucking like me no matter what I do. Now, <laughs> so like I've been out of shape about this for like a while. And then just like the other day, she explained to me what she meant. And the way that she says she meant it was like, I cannot continue to just do whatever I want and still have her love me, I guess is what she said she meant. And I'm telling you, that is not how it fucking read. I might not be quoting it exactly. I, I should have had her fucking, I, sh I should have had her send it to me or something. But my point is, that is not how it fucking read. You know, like, no way. It read like, I do not love you. Do whatever you want. It's not going to happen. That's how I fucking read it. Anyways, whatever. Point is, I got in big fucking trouble for posting it for eight fucking minutes. Big trouble. And I suppose it was a dumb thing to do. And it relates to the fucking topic of the show about telling your friends and family about your relationship problems. Let me tell you the worst fucking possible thing you can do. Worse than telling your friends. Worse than telling your family. And that is bringing your relationship problems to social fucking media. Ironically enough, it is not something that I am skilled at. But... The moral of this show is do as I say, not as I do. You know what I mean? But uh, this wisdom comes, as you see here in the intro, this wisdom comes from a lifetime of poor decisions. Um, so just because I don't do it doesn't mean I know it's not the fucking dumbest thing in the world you can do. And take it from me. It is the dumbest thing in the world you can do. Uh, yeah. So just post the good stuff. Don't post the bad stuff. Don't, uh, don't throw your significant other under the fucking bus. Um, you know, on social media because it's <laughs> for a zillion reasons, but I, uh, it's entertaining. I enjoy, I enjoy watching it all happen, but, um, it's not, it's never, a good, it's never has a good outcome. It's never like, Oh, that'll fix it. <laughs> now with that, I would like to use this last little bit of the show to discuss some hypocrisy that I have experienced in my relationship just recently. It, uh, and here's the thing, man. Fucking Ashley, as uh, as mad as she got at me about that thing that I did, right? So that's what I did. That was my thing. I explained it to you very specifically. I feel like everyone understands what I did. <clears throat> A week or two prior, Ashley and I were getting chippy and talking shit. And she, you know, she, she was... We, you know, sometimes we, we try to hurt each other's feelings <laughs> and we're arguing. So I said something to her, like she said something nasty and I said something back. And I was like, I said something like, yeah, well, you've got about, you've got about two years left to being pretty or something like that. So you better figure it out or something like that. I don't remember the context of the conversation, but it was like something about time and what, you know, whatever. So, um, super fucking rude thing to say. Obviously I don't believe it, but she had said something to me that hurt my feelings. So I was just trying to, you know, hurt her feelings back. Cause that's how immature I am. That's how I live my life. Any fucking ways. I said that to her and then she made a post and it's like, and it's like, it's like your standard. It's like, it's like you and your girlfriend. It's like your girlfriend. And it, it's like this, we get in a fight and there's a process every time it's new profile picture. This is like Ashley's response to our fighting slash fake breakup, new profile picture. Um, remove the relationship status. You know what I mean? Not change it to single, but just remove it. And then, you know, make some kind of derogatory post. Um, and this post in particular was someone said to me, you've only got two years left to be pretty. All I heard was I'm pretty, uh, which is funny. It's a good post. You know, <laughs> like when she, when she put it, I thought, oh, that's a fucking good one, you know? Um, but also it's just a good way to get 500 dudes to be like, oh, you're pretty, 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 that guy's an idiot. Whoever said that these same boners that I'm talking about at the beginning of the fucking podcast, you know what I mean? These same guys who probably talk shit to their girlfriends when they're pissed off, you know what I mean? But they're the best boyfriend ever to the fake girl that they're trying to bang that they don't know. Yada fucking yada. Tale as old as time. But anyways, my point is she posted that. And to me, that's the exact fucking same thing as me posting a text from her and saying, ladies, please interpret this as her saying, someone just told me I've only got two years left to be pretty, blah, blah, blah. 
You know what I mean? It's the same thing. There is one difference, though. There is one difference. The difference is mine was up for like less than fucking 20 minutes, and hers is still up to this day. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Whatever. It's, uh, it is what it is. I think she. I think someone like said like who said that, and she credited it to someone else. She was like, oh, some shit talker on TikTok to like not make me look bad. But come on. Make it, th- it happens the same fucking day that you remove your relationship status and update your profile picture. You know what I mean? People don't got to be fucking geniuses. Like my buddies will text me and be like, you and Ashley break up again. <laughs> like, like you're not fooling anyone. Everyone knows what you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Childish fucking child. I'm probably gonna be in big trouble for telling that story, but, uh, I don't know. I think it relates to the show. I think I didn't tell any lies and, uh, do you know, I don't know. It is what it is, man. With that, I suppose we could make this, uh, make this last call for alcohol. Oh, last call. Okay. Let's sum up the <clears throat> let's sum up the 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 show here. Number 1. Keep your relationship problems in house as much as possible. Number 2, if you got to tell if you got to talk to somebody about it, talk to the same person about it and make sure it's a good person. And number 3, make sure you always tell that person the good things also about your significant other, not just the bad things. Uh, with that, I suppose this is HRK signing off. You know, uh, I had a real nice time. I feel like this whole podcast was six minutes long, but what are you going to do? You know, sometimes I only got six minutes worth of shit to say. Come see me Wednesday at my buddy's at nine o'clock where I will be, uh, telling some new jokes and, uh, some, some old classics. So HRK signing off saying, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thanks for listening to the perfect drink. Remember, you can always hear me first on be positive radio every Monday at 1 p.m. If you miss me there, all episodes are available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you might listen to your podcasts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. If you're interested in being a guest on the show or you just want to tell me how much you like me, feel free to send me an email at hrkpresents at gmail.com or just slide into my DMs like your mom does. See you next time.